Let's be real. Missionary discipleship isn't working. I feel like Pope Francis just created a great new buzzword for us to use in ministry and religious education. It seems every ministry leader I talk to names their programming missionary discipleship. It's the theme for conferences, retreats, parish school religion programs, and more. Which I guess is better than calling it CCD, but is it really? By and large, our programs at aiming and forming missionary disciples are catechetical in nature. They're designed primarily to pass on instruction, to form people to receive sacraments, whether it's First Eucharist, reconciliation, confirmation, matrimony, or just passing on instruction or church teaching, largely in a classroom setting. So I'm sorry, but if this is all we have to offer our young people, it's no wonder they're leaving the church. We have all these surveys, statistics, and polls that are saying almost exclusively why our young people are leaving. In my own listening sessions with youth and young adults, they talk about how they want access to quality mentors, people that will accompany them through life's ups and downs, their joys and their hopes, and do so as people of faith. They're lonely. They're longing for meaningful relationships with others. They want to know how theology, spirituality, and their faith can help them with issues related to mental health. And they want a church that listens to them, that is responsive to their needs, their real needs, and is less judgmental. And they want faith communities that make a difference in the world. The National Dialogue final report that came out even tells us that our affiliated young adults have one foot out the door already. Yet the church has the capacity to meet the needs of our young people. In fact, it seems to me the most natural space to meet the needs of our young people. But instead, this isn't happening. Our young people feel, they report feeling unwelcomed. They have no mentors, no people to walk with them through their lives. They have no one to help them name God's saving work in their lives, to put their faith in conversation with daily living. They recall receiving 45 minutes of instruction on a Wednesday night, having little to no connection to their catechist or anyone else in their faith community, and they dread it. They can't wait to get confirmed so they never have to come back again. So let that sink in for a moment. Our PSR catechetical faith formation programs, our efforts at forming missionary disciples are failing. They're driving people from the church. But standing in this disconnect is Pope Francis, whose actual inspiration behind the language of missionary discipleship hasn't fully been realized yet. In talking about how ministry leaders can embrace the new evangelization, Pope Francis writes, a community of missionary disciples is a church that goes forth. In knowing God's love for us, we are moved forward to take the initiative to go out to others, seek those who have fallen away, stand at the crossroads, and welcome the outcasts. Jesus washed the feet of his own disciples. So can't we try a little harder now? You see, the new evangelization is an effort to help ministry leaders become a more synodal church where the people of God journey together as missionary disciples to create a more just and compassionate world. In Christus Vivit, he writes of young people, he writes of these young hearts who want to build a better world. He sees them taking to the streets. He says, don't stop. Don't be a bystander. Fight for the common good. So what does it really mean to be a more synodal church where the people of God journey together as missionary disciples to create a more just and compassionate world? A more synodal church is a church that never stops listening, that is in constant dialogue with others. 
And where the people of God journey together as missionary disciples, it means they're not alone. They formed a small Christian community, passionate about the gospel in the world, working with others to bring that gospel of mercy, joy, compassion, and love, the kerygma, more fully into the world. To create a more just and compassionate world is to show how necessary it is to be a person of faith in the world for others. So this, my friends, is not a classroom lesson on Wednesday night. So how do we do this? Missionary discipleship is not a new program. It's a process and it's a lengthy one and it looks different for every community and every individual. And it's one that requires us, as Pope Francis says in Christus Vivit, to leave the comfort of our neatly packaged programs, to actually go out to encounter others and in doing so encounter God. But to do this, we've had missionary discipleship as language for years now, and we still aren't doing it. And so to do this, maybe we need a renewed ecclesial imagination, a whole new way of thinking about and doing church. Craig Dykstra writes, ecclesial imagination is a gift that is given by God through the sustained and nurture and shaping of ministries of wise and faithful ministers with deep, rich pastoral imaginations. So I invite you all to imagine with me for a moment. Imagine you wake up in the morning and you look outside and you see the rays of the sun piercing through the clouds and you think, oh, there's God to greet me this morning. And so then you roll over, you flip over your phone, naturally, and you see your best friend has sent you a very silly meme because she knows you have a very hard day of work ahead of you. And you think to yourself, that's God telling me I've got this today. And you're at work and you go to lunch and you have a coworker who sits with you and tells you, shares this story of how over the weekend she just reconnected with her old college mentor. And she realized, the two of them realized that they were in each other's lives at very important moments. And she just felt such gratitude. And you paused and you thought to yourself, that's joy she experienced. That's joy only God can give us. So let's come back. You see, God is present all around us, in creation, in our relationships with others, and within ourselves. In so many moments of every day, we can experience God, not just in a church, not in a classroom, not just in a textbook, but in the very fabric of our lives, in the contours of daily living. So what if this way of thinking about and experiencing God's presence was also our experience of church, of ministry, of religious education? What if this internal desire to encounter God in others, in the world, became our primary reason to do ministry? What if instead of focusing our efforts on telling people about God, we actively went out each day with the hope of experiencing God in other people's lives. You see, the new evangelization is not about bringing God to others, as Peter Fan writes. God's already there, active in the world and in others. Instead, the new evangelization is about listening to where God is active, present in people's stories and in their lives and in your relationships with them. In fact, the New Vatican Directory for Catechesis, which is filled with the language of accompaniment, encounter, and missionary discipleship, affirms this. It says, This missionary going forth means being willing to seek out the glimmers of truth that are already present in various human activities. Trusting God is mysteriously active in the heart of the human before it has been explicitly reached by the gospel. So God is already there. Years ago, Pope John Paul II, in his Redemptorous Miso, described this missionary going forth, this way of doing ministry. And he recognized that it's not easy. He said, this is one of the greatest challenges of the church. So it's no wonder we're missing the mark a little. In his Christes Fidelis Leches, he writes, we need a renewed pastoral action towards people who are suffering, one that is capable of sustaining and fostering attention nearness, presence, listening, dialogue, sharing, 
and real help to those in need. And our young people are in need. They're facing extreme loneliness, marginalization, and other forms of church-related hurt. Emeritus Pope Benedict XVI, in his Deus Caritas Est, which Pope Francis quotes so liberally in all of his writing, he said, being a Christian is not the result of an ethical choice or a lofty ideal, but the encounter with an event, a person, which gives life a new horizon and a decisive direction. This is what Pope Francis calls the challenge of missionary spirituality, one that actively goes out to encounter others, to engage in the world, to see where the glimmers of God are already present. And as Christus Vivit here writes, this new style of ministry goes out to those places where real young people are active, and it continually reaches beyond the walls of the church building. So activating our ecclesial imagination is about developing a posture, a habit of making real deep listening a daily practice. The greatest ministry leaders I've ever known are the greatest listeners I've ever known. Deep listening is not about waiting to reply or hoping you have something to say or chiming in a rebuttal. It's a sacred practice of hearing where God is at work in someone's life. It's meeting them where they are, hearing their stories. Pope Francis, during the 50th anniversary of the Synod of Bishops, he said, a synodal church realizes that listening is more than simply hearing. It's a mutual listening in which everyone has something to learn. In Evangelii, in Evangelii Gaudium, he writes, only through such respectful and compassionate listening can we enter on the paths of true growth and awaken a yearning for the Christian ideal, to respond fully to God's love, to bring to fruition what God has sown in our lives. So this ecclesial imagination, it's not the work of one person. It's not like, hey, the youth minister has got an ecclesial imagination today. And it's not something you can do at an event with 100 people or even 25. It's a totally different way of thinking about and doing church based on the fortitude of our relationships with individuals in our communities. You see, as Catholics and as humans, we're called to community, communio. We're called to be in places where we belong, where we can share our life's ups and downs, our joys, our hopes, our sorrows with other people. Real community is not a gathering of people with something in common. True meaningful community is a place where you know you belong, where you matter, and you're known. And less and less people feel like their parish, or going to mass on Sunday, offers them an experience of real community. No one knows their names, their longings, their joys, their sorrows, their ups and downs, who they are. So many of them stop going. Instead, they go where they do experience true community, where they are known. But if we could embrace a new ecclesial imagination, a new way of being church that actively fosters true community with a presence and sacred of listening and dialogue, a church that gets interested in the lives of others, then we might offer a vibrant, life-giving community for people to come back to. See, I had a glimmer of this ecclesial imagination when I engaged with ministry leaders in a, in a dialogue session on the needs and desires of young adults in their community. And through this process of deep, sacred listening, we not only became a part of one another's lives in meaningful relationships, we formed a small Christian community rooted in our shared mission to make the church a more welcoming place for our young people. And as I processed the time that we spent together, I realized that we, I realized that I was transformed. I was a part of their lives now. I felt the deep, powerful presence of God in their stories and in our new relationships as we moved forward as a true community of missionary disciples, ready to go out where young people are and invite them back to talk with us, but also know that it was safe to do so. 
From what we heard from the young people we invited to dialogue with us, we realized we had our work cut out for us. If we were to humbly ask ourselves, how am I implicated by what they said? What changes do I have to make in the way my ministry style, my communication? What does our parish community have to do to faithful re faithfully respond to what we heard from them? So this style of ministry, it requires more leaders, more people trained in the art of listening and dialogue and to teach others how to do the same. But today we seem to think a classroom is equivalent to encountering God in others, to deep, meaningful relationship building and dialogue. And in most places, it's not. So no, missionary discipleship is not working because we're not even doing it yet. Missionary discipleship is not just another program. It's not catechesis. It's not delivering doctrine. It's a challenging process of reimagining our way of being and doing church, of opening ourselves up to true sacred dialogue, to be taken aback, to be arrested by God's unwavering mercy, love, and compassion. But we have to take the first step. Ministry leaders need to be the ones to invite young people and others into this space and assure them it is a safe space to share what's on their hearts and minds. So I dare you all to activate your ecclesial imaginations. I dare you to be curious about young people, about what is on their hearts and in their minds, and to rethink programming around the true meaning of missionary discipleship, to bring your transformative spirituality, your new way of being church, of bringing the charisma and embodying mercy, love, and compassion that only God can give us of journeying together as true missionary disciples on the road, hand in hand, set out to create a more just and compassionate world. Thank you.